Okay. So first the T. And I'm doing them dark so that you guys can see, but I usually would do it very light. So first the T, then I'll add one side, trying to make it straight as much as I can. And then the other side needs to be the same distance from the middle. So I'm gonna use my pencil to say, okay, this is the distance. And then I'm gonna put a little mark right here. And now I know that I need to put the other side right here, there. So now I have, I know that they're equidistant, the same distance from the middle. The middle line will be erased at some point, but right now we leave it in. So the next step will be to add the smile and the frown. And the distance between the middle line, this middle line, and the top, the middle line, and the bottom is the same. So I'm looking at my cup. My, my opening is not very big. So I'm going to put a little line right here, like this. And the distance that I have from here will be the same to the top. So I put these little lines like this. Well, it's better if it's straight. So this will tell me how high the opening will go when I draw like this. And then like this. So we're going to draw now. From the corner. And I'm using my 4B so that you guys can see, but I would usually use my HB to do this. So the corner, same thing here. And here. Uh, so now that it's done, I can adjust it if I need to. For example, I see this goes higher than this side. So now I will adjust this side to be the same on either side. It goes a little higher over here. So now's the time to adjust it. So at this stage of the drawing, it's very important to make it, uh, make it right. And just think about it. If you were to fold your paper this way, then this should be the exact same shape as this. Uh, you could also do a tracing of this section. If you were to fold it in half, you would see that it's the same. If it's not the same, then, uh, then now is the time to adjust it. Like I can see this goes down a little bit more like this. All right, once this is done, we are done with this phase. We're going to move on to this phase. In this phase, the first thing we will do is we'll do the smile at the bottom here. So now it's very important that you look at your own mug to see how deep the smile will be. Is it going to be really round or not too round? Well, one thing is sure is that um the bottom here will be at least as deep as this probably a little deeper and this is just a, a case of perspective so i know that 
from the middle line this goes this this low so from this line this will probably go like down here once i've put this then i can go from the corner from either corner and and draw you should look at your own mug to decide uh, where this goes I'll put it upside down just because I have an easel and a piece of wood is in the way. There. So now I have the bottom of my mug. Is this low enough? I think it's not low enough. So I'm going to make it even lower. When you d change a line, important to put the new line before you erase the old one otherwise there's a tendency to to redraw exactly where it was before there this is better i think so now i'm going to erase this old one Right, so now I have something that looks a little bit like a mug. Any questions so far from anyone? If you have a question, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. So continuing, the next step that I suggest is uh, I do have in my subject matter, there's like the background here, and there is this line where the background meets the surface on which my object is. So this line here is important, and this, this is what we see here. Now, this line is straight. So when you draw it, make sure that for me it's about yay high so what I suggest that you do is put it on the side and, and draw it all the way through in a straight line now I know that they connect really well now I can erase it in the middle there oops there i'm just going to make it a little darker so that you guys can see so this is where the back wall meets the surface on which my uh, my mug is. Now is the time to add uh, the handle of the mug. So when looking at the handle and placing the handle of the mug, you have to look at your own mug. Where does this connect? Does this connect right here the lip? Does this connect lower here? Some people have a handle that is like more like straight, like go straight like this. Uh, sometimes the handle is more like on this mug here. Uh, one very long, so here it's completely straight, and down here it's completely straight. It's actually about brass, this is high. Um, and it's a very, very uh, wide one. It goes very much away from, from the mug. In the case of this one, I have this angle here. It's like this. It's not like this. So observe the handle for your mug and try to draw it um, and try to do the shape. That, it, that you have on your own mug. So I'm going to do mine. 
starting like this. I have an angle like this. So I'm going to do it like this. This is the angle that it starts at. And um, it actually starts here at the bottom below this line. So somewhere around here. And it starts with something like this. And then after that, I have the whole angles like this. It goes like this for quite some time. But then it curves, curves up. And this here plateau around here. I know that the handle is a little lower than this. You need to look on your own mug to see if it's lower or higher. And then um, this goes up. It's almost like an ear in the case of the handle that I have. So that's my first step. This is my first step. So I did the outside. Uh, I did the outside of the handle. Now I'm going to add the inside line. But before I add the inside line, I'm going to look at it again and see. Now is the time to adjust it before I add the inside line. Looks, uh, looks pretty accurate. All right. So then the inside line, it actually starts lower here, like this. And it's quite thin. It's quite thin, but it's pretty much the same thickness all the way through, except when I get to the bottom, the very bottom. It goes like this. There. So now I have my handle. And this line here, that is where the wall meets the surface. I'm going to erase it here because I can't really see it through it. And also, now is the time where, um, oh yeah, erase this. Then we'll do the lip. I have a lip on the uh, on the mug that I have, or the cup that I have. So I'm going to put it in. And in the case of my mug, you can see there's a lip that goes all the way around. And the lip is a little wider than my mug. If you don't have a lip, you don't put a lip. If you have a lip, then now's the time to put it in. So to put in the lip, the lip is, is wider. So what I'm going to do outside wider than this to start, and I'm going to add the smile here at the top. The inside line actually goes inside the higher than the lower and here in the corner. So starting outside like over here and over here and I'm gonna add my smile and the whole while I'm looking at the mug that I see and it goes like this. Same thing on the other side. There you go. Okay. And then it comes around and it goes and attaches back to the back one. Like so. And I can't really see it on the on the inside, except what I do see here is that it's lighter on the lip and darker on the inside. So I'm going to add a little bit of a lip here, but it will be to show this light. 
So this is lower than this line. So down here, and it goes to the corner and it just gets lost here in the corner, like so. There. So now we have our lip. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? All right, now's the time to erase those lines that look funny. So the, the line in the middle, the line here at the bottom and this line in the middle. So my lines will not completely disappear because I made them very dark so that you guys could see them. But I usually make these lines uh, with a very, um, very light touch on my pencil. And so therefore I can usually completely erase these lines. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's do a little bit here in the corner. Now's the time to start the sheeting. But before we start the sheeting, maybe I would like to see what you guys have done so far, because uh, there's only nine minutes left to the class, and um, I will send you, I will send you this, so that uh, you can have a, you can have the example. But uh, as a homework, I'd like you to do the shading, and to do the shading, I mean, I couldn't put the light on my subject matter here because it would, it would create a glare but I suggest that you put it in a place where you have good lighting on your subject matter, either from the right or from the left, and, um, and, uh, and create that. So I'm gonna stop the recording. I'm going to do the same as on this one. So you can see here, the light comes from this direction. There's more light on this side than there is on this side. And the shadow continues on the table. And you know what? I forgot to continue the shadow on the wall. Probably there was no wall when I did this one. Uh, but I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you here how I start for the sheeting. I usually use for the shading, I usually use uh, an HB. I start with an HB, and then when I want to go darker, that's when I use the 4B. B stands for bold, so B will always be darker um, than the HB, like a 4B. If you have an 8B, then that's even darker. The H stands for hard. Hard means that it is, um, it will leave less, because it's harder, it leaves, leaves less lead on the paper and therefore it's a lighter pencil. If ever you don't remember, then use your 4B and your 4H together and try to do a line like this and you'll see that the 4B is definitely darker than, oops, just do lines like this. You'll see that, um, your the 4b is the one on the top 
and the 4H, the one on the bottom. So the 4B is definitely darker than the 4H. That's one way to remember. So using the HB, I'm going to do the same shading that I had here. And immediately I can see that in the middle here, um, there's a lot of light, uh, a lot of darkness here and not so much here. So um, I would go like this with the pencil sideways and indicate the darkness that comes here. And the darkness goes to a very light, uh, very light over here. And this is darker down here. So now I'm using even more pressure on my HB. And I can go pretty dark even with just the HB. And I'm trying not to create too much of a sharp edge there. And uh, because the light comes from here, that's why we have light here, because the light comes this way. And so therefore, this is all in the shadow, and this becomes in the light. Whereas this here is in the light, and this will be in the shadow. So the first thing I would say is uh, all of this will be in the shadow. And so I will do a very light touch on the whole uh, mug on this side. And I'm not being too careful. And as I come around here, that's when I will change to my 4H. Oops, that's 4B, 4H. And I will continue with the 4H, which will give you give me an even lighter touch here. All right. So now that I've done this, I can clean up the edges with my needle eraser there and on my lip. Okay. So now I already have a sense of form on my mug. What's important is that you look at the mug that you have and observe if there is any kind of lighter or darker areas on the mug that you have, considering the light that you have on it. And this will help you identify certain interesting shapes, such as here the top in this section. There is a darker area that I can see. So I go darker with my 4B in this whole area. And also, from what I see on my mug, there's another little area of this over here, like so. And then it goes to nothing. Even with a 4B, it can go pretty light. So it goes like this. And at the bottom, I see the same thing. I see some darkness. That's right here at the bottom. And on the table now, I'm going to turn this upside down to show you this. So on the table, that's where the darkest is. And now with the 4B, look how dark I can go with the 4B. I can go even darker than what I had it before.
Of course, you'll have to observe and see what you see. So now so far I have this, but this really goes this way. And it goes on the wall. So the wall behind it or whatever is behind it. Now the wall might be lighter or darker than your table. In my case, I'm just going to make it a little lighter than my table. Although what we see here is the reverse. But this is a made up, made up shadow. And you have to observe what shape is your shadow. So one thing that's important is when a shadow is close to the object, it tends to be sharper. When the shadow runs away from the object, it tends to be a softer edge. So that comes with observation. But already you can see that there is some shape to uh, this mug. <laughs> 